usually we don't like to go on holiday in December because it's very crowded it's more expensive and we prefer to have a nature experience rather than to go where crowds are so we decided to plan a trip and try and do it off grid the plan was set and we had to decide where we're going to go. Being December as well, um, we were reluctant to go to places like Kruger or the bush which is normally very hot over those periods and as a matter of fact, people reported December in Kruger was very hot, over 42 degrees um, centigrade. So we searched for the mountains. Initially I was reluctant but then Louis showed me these two places which he thought of, which we've never been. And once he showed me where and how off the grid I was, I was getting very excited and we started planning a route. So we started looking at routes and sleep over um, to get there in a reasonable amount of time so that we don't have to drive at night. Yep. And um, yeah, let, let me show you guys on a map of South Africa exactly where we plan to go. Looking at the map of South Africa, our seven day trip was planned starting in Centurion, going all the way around the city before returning to Centurion, with two main camp spots being picked. The one at the south of the city on the border in the Eastern Cape, while the second spot was in KwaZulu Natal in the Drakensberg. Tonight I leave familiar for the great unknown Got a couple broken arrows and my hair has grown Since you saw me last Talking on an old flip phone Today I shed the skin of who I used to be Got Sinatra on a 45, I'm buzzing like a
destination? Yeah, um, the second day we would cross over from the Free State to the Eastern Cape and drive up Lundianz Pass, which is a gravel pass. Um, but as per usual with gravel roads, we underestimated the time it would take um, because of um, lots of rain they had uh, a week before. And um, yeah, it took us about three or four hours to drive 40 kilometers up the pass. A very, very scenic road. Yeah, it was absolutely stunning. I mean, we were very excited when we got to the top of Lydian's Pass and started to see what the uh, hills and mountains looked like. And as we went to the gate to through the farm of our first camping spot, we were so excited to see how beautiful it was. We're not keen to share the camps, campsite mm -hmm. um, because we would like to keep it for yourself. There's only one camp spot um, at the campsite, but it is an absolute Beast. stunning, stunning, stunning camp spot. Um, but we'll show you more about that later in the video.
planned it and Lee said we're going to go to a campsite with on a farm that's just got one stand and I wasn't sure what to expect when we, uh, when we were approaching it we first got lost a little bit so we went into no we don't need to tell them about that <laughs> we went into the wrong farm a farm had exactly the same name as the farm on which the camp spot was so initially we went a little bit of a detour onto the wrong farm and then realized we can't be there. But when we started driving to the farm up to the hill, the more we drove towards the mountain, the more excited I got. And I couldn't wait to see where it's going to end and how it's going to look. And as you drive through that little gate, just when you turn into it, you just see this green, green grass in the middle of this mountain with this massive rock next to it that is so protective for wind and, and things that you sometimes get in the berg. So as we drove in, my, uh, my breath was completely blown away. I was so excited. I couldn't wait to set up. Um, we had a little bit of... Um, uh, a late arrival so we we just put up camp and we felt the conditions and the protection we were getting from this rock and the mountain behind us that we didn't even bother to put the awning up but epic waking up in the morning and it's completely quiet and you hear those little um uh, drakensberg birds go beep the complete silence with all the waterfalls everywhere from this mountain was little streams and as we slept and as you wake up you just hear this water over the rocks and these little mountain birds start chirping it was just unforgettable sitting with my binoculars all the time I was watching some swallows who made a nest under a rock just behind the camp spot and day for day I watched them as they built their little house up on the rock it was epic I just watched the doves go to bed every night in this rock and just the quietness and the serenity of it was okay, unforgettable. Okay, okay, take a breath. Take a <laughs> breath. I told you she's. I'm not going to be able to stop her, but you'll see in the video fit footage what what we are um, going on about. In the closet way back I won't be needing that I won't be needing that oh. I'm ready to fly down 65 Hit the coastline In the sunshine I'm going to fly my new high Hit the coastline In the sunshine
Okay, how much wood? Um, once again, last stop from any road into the mountain. Um, only 10 camp spots. It's part of um, Royal National, Royal Natal Parks. No power, one ablution with gas for, for the showers, etc. But like many of the camp spots in, in the Drakensberg, um, the hiking trails is the main attraction there, except for the scenery, obviously. Yeah, there was so many different uh, walking trails that started from our camp area. So the, the office there where we checked in is also the office where the, all the hikers go and register. And then I give you a little map. There is probably five, six different hiking trails starting off from there. We got up one morning early and we left at about just before six and we took up a hike. Um, that was very, very nice. We just decided to just take a casual hike. So we went up until about just over three kilometers, stopped so many times. I couldn't resist. It was just flowers and butterflies and beautiful um, uh the rocks and the, all these pink wildflowers were on the mountain. So it was just stop, walk, stop, walk all the time because we were just taking so much of photos of how beautiful it was. Yeah, and then the rest of our stay there, obviously typical of, of a mountain area, the, um, the weather changes very rapidly um, and unexpectedly. And mostly in the afternoon. Yeah, mostly in the afternoon. We had rain about every afternoon. Some days a bit more hectic, as you'll see on the video, than other days, <laughs> um, which did wash out one or two of our, our bright plans. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome experience as well. Definitely go back there. Not much to complain about. The one thing what would have been nice is a tap at each of the camp spots. There's only one camp spot with a tap. In the whole camping area. In the whole camping area, um, which is which was a bit of a bummer. Um, but except for that, very, very nice. We'll definitely go back there. Definitely. Be, be your love Then I have to play the friend But either way, as time staggers on For your heart, I will contend You're a wild one you need to be set free So just say the words And I'll come running And we'll
enjoyed our video. Um, this was our 2020, last 2020 trip, uh, midst of COVID. Um, so you should stay tuned on, on us. We planned another trip, so stay tuned to see our next camping trip early in 2021. Yes, and thanks a lot for watching. Hope to see you guys soon again. <laughs>